Hi, I'm Kenny from Maybowl Design, and today I'm out in the factory. Uh, Sue came out today and swept all the floors and cleaned up uh, a lot of the lathes and stuff because it was getting pretty bad. And I started out this morning and built yet another batch of Soya mini filter adapters. Uh, I built, now for the past week, I think I've built 10 every single day. Uh, but, you know. <laughs> It's what pays the bills. I also had to stop <clears throat> and make a, a bunch of lids. I had a lot of lids today. And I also had to stop and make a batch of adjustable remotes. I had orders for a bunch of those. So, uh, somebody uh, emailed me and was talking about uh, the straw that comes with the uh, Sawyer adapter. I mean the Sawyer uh, water filter, mini water filter. And their thought was that the straw is designed to go on the dirty end so you can put it in the water and then suck on the uh, clean end. Uh, and once you do that, it's contaminated. So if you put it back on the clean end and put my adapter on it, you'd be cross-contaminated. And that's true, but my thought on it was that uh, once you installed it on the clean on the clean end, that it'd be a permanent installation. You'd never take it off. But I could see his point, and then you wouldn't have a straw if you wanted to go the other way around. But I found an easy fix for that. Uh, what I did was, and I took uh, a piece of the straw and I cut off. A, this is like a two and a half inch piece, but you actually only need to cut off a one inch piece off the end of your straw to install this Sawyer adapter and that leaves you this piece uh, to put on the dirty end to drink out of if you want to because this is way longer than it needs to be now I was going to try to get a bunch of these but I think this is an easier fix I'd go with about a one inch piece and then you'd have like a six inch piece to put on the dirty end uh, to drink out of if you wanted to that's you know that's just uh, because this will right on the dirty end. Uh, so you could... Boy, that does not come off easy. Once you put that on there, that's basically on there. Uh, I'm not even going to try to take it off. But if you wind that right on there, I'm not sure you'll be able to get it back off again. But anyway, uh, that's what I did. I just cut a piece off the end of it to install the adapter. And uh, then you're, you're good to go. And if you want to take this adapter off, you've still got this one, the long one, to use uh, as a drinking straw. So anyway, that takes care of that. Now, uh, that answers that question. Now, I had someone, and I just want to explain this out, somebody who uh, emailed me and had placed an order, and they, and they left a note at the bottom saying they thought I sold a baking kit with a 12 centimeter pot, a cut down 10 centimeter pot, a baking ring and a lid, but they couldn't find it on the site. So what they wanted me to do was they wanted me to uh, add that to the order and if I didn't sell that item they wanted me to gather up all the pieces and make one up and add it to the order and then email them and tell them how much extra it would be and then they'd make another off-site payment uh, to me. Now my thought on that is I can do all that uh, it's going to be extra work for me to go out and, and put all this stuff together and then email you and then make sure that you pay me before I ship it. Or, since you already know the items you need to make a baking kit, why not just go to my website and when you made the original order, order that stuff too. And then it would be all paid for and it would be in your order and there would be a nice smooth flow and I wouldn't have to... Uh, take my time out to do an oddball custom off-site order and have to email you and wait for you to pay me and all that. Uh, it, that's why I prefer people do. If there's anything on the website you want, uh, just order it. I, I don't like to have to pull stuff out of stock and put it in an order and then email you and tell you how much it is and all that. <clears throat> okay, enough of that. It's kind of an overcast day and it's 64 degrees and a little bit windy. Uh, now 64 is not bad if it's sunny because the sun hits you and warms you up. 
but it's an overcast day in 64 and a little windy. Kind of got a chill to it. So, uh, besides not having enough energy, <laughs> um, it was cold, so I didn't ride the bike today. I probably should have, but I'm a little run down from all these orders. Uh, so, I decided not to ride the uh, Velomobile today. Probably should have, but I didn't. Now, uh, the uh, foreign order shipping, to give you some idea uh, of the cost of shipping uh, to foreign countries, I've kept track of the past week uh, and I'm spending, uh, last week I spent about uh, $300 to ship foreign orders, about $50 a day, $48 to $55 a day uh, to ship to foreign countries. Now, I think you know that I pay the shipping. Uh, that comes right out of the bottom line. So, uh, I'm going to sit down with my people at the website that run my website and see if there isn't a box they can check there that when it comes up with a foreign order, uh, it will charge a different rate than it will for a domestic order. And I'm thinking uh, they're averaging around $15. If it's Canada, it's not that high, but if it's like Sweden or Denmark or uh, United Kingdom, it's usually around $15. Seems to be late, $15, $16 for a foreign order. So uh, we may have to go that way. I've got to uh, stop in and talk to Andre and see if, if there's a way to make the website so that it will pick out a, a foreign order and charge a different rate. So heads up. Probably won't be right away, but sooner or later I'll get around to it. Uh, I think that's I think that's everything I wanted to talk about on this video. Um, I'm Kenny from Mini Bull Design. Get out and hike. Take a friend. Enjoy the great outdoors, and more important than anything, try to have some fun today, and try to have a really great day. Bye bye.